Okay, so what are Python variables? What is a variable in Python? So if you are a beginner to Python, you might have heard this term variable. What is a variable exactly is? So a variable in Python is just a container for storing data. Yeah, you heard me right. So a variable is a container to hold data. So a Python variable can hold any types of data depending on what you want it to hold. So let me write some notes here. A variable a variable in Python is a container that holds some data. So it's just a container that holds some data. And also a variable is a name that refers to a value. So what does that mean? So what that means is that a variable is just a name that shows the memory location, memory location of some data in the computer memory. So a variable is used to store data in the computer's memory. So what happens is that, let's say I want uh, a variable to hold the number of students in a school. So come here and create students underscore count is equals to 1000. So that's a variable. So the students underscore count, this is a variable we're talking about. Students underscore count is a variable. And then what does that variable contain? The variable contains 1000 which means 1000 students. So the Python interpreter will allocate some memory and store the number 1000 in that memory. And then the students underscore count variable will refer to the location of that memory, which holds the value 1000. So then the, the, the variable will have the variable name will the variable will only reference the memory location. So if I want to print out what variable contains, I can just come here and say print students underscore count. Save this one and run it. This is just telling me to install some formatter for this. But that's okay. So you can say Python app dot py to run the file. Make sure you have Python installed. If you don't have Python installed, go to python.org and install the latest version, which is around 11, 3.11. So you can see we got the value 11. So the student underscore count is a variable which stores some data in inside eight. Okay, so I hope you got that. So what kind of data can we store in a variable? So we have this concept of primitive types. Primitive types in Python. So these are, what is a primitive type? Is a primitive type. Yes, a primitive type is a type of data that is built in into the programming language. So these are just a data type. What type of data? Built-in. So we have various built-in data types. We have built-in data types in Python. So we have an integer. So what is an integer? An integer is used to store a whole number. So let's say age is equal to 20. So age is an integer because 20 is a whole number. You can come here and print can print type of age. So let's run this code again. Just press the up or up down. So we can see this is an integer. It's it's a it's a part of the int class. So we have primitive data types. We have integers. We have float. We go through this very fast. Here we have boolean. Then we have string. Then we have a string and then we have none. Okay, so we have seen that 
the age 20 is an integer. So an integer is a whole number. So what is an integer? Let's check what an integer is. An integer is a whole number. Integer is a whole number value. So that's the first primitive type. And we have said that primitive types of data are those data types that are built into a programming language. So we move on to next. Next we get something like a float. Maybe the price, shoe price. You can say shoe price is equals to 100.50. So 100.50 is a float. So float just indicates that this is a decimal number. So float is a decimal number value. Easy peasy. So next we move on to strings. So before we move to strings, we can go on to we go on to boolean. A boolean is a true or false value. And like we will see later, a boolean is used to make decision. Like we can say, if age is less than twenty, you can say can print something like you are a child. So let's try that very fast. So we can say if age is less than 18, let's say 18, then we can print you are a minor. So what booleans, booleans helps us to make decisions, to make computers make decisions. Then else, and say you are an adult. So boolean is used to make decisions and we only have two booleans either true or false and you can see python is case sensitive so we cannot say true like this no we cannot say true like this so it must start with a capital letter and also the false value so you take note of that python is case sensitive so we have seen we have created a simple program here to check if a person is a minor or an, an adult. So Python can make decisions based on the booleans. So booleans are used to make decisions. So let's see. Currently we have age as 20 and we are saying if age is less than 18, print you are a minor. What if the age is not less than 18? Then we print you are an adult. So let's see what we'll get. Hey, we got you are an adult. So Python can make a decision that I'm not I'm not less than 18, so that's what we use booleans for. So we have seen we have various data types, primitive data types. We have integers, floats, boolean, strings. So we have strings, we have list, we have a tuple, we have a set, and we have a dictionary. These are built-in data types in our programming languages. So the last thing that we will talk about is variable naming. So, variable naming conventions. So, a variable must start with a letter or an underscore. Take note of that. Start with a letter or an underscore. Also, we have the second one. A variable cannot start with a number. So, these are just conventions that you have to follow to become a good programmer or a developer. So that if you have a team of developers, it will be easier for them to understand what you are writing. So variable can only contain alphanumerical characters and underscores. Variable name must be case sensitive. Also, you have noticed that I'm using descriptive names and meaningful names to name my variables. We said variables are containers to hold data. So use descriptive variable names. You can see now here I have something like students underscore count. So even if 10 years later I come and check this code, I can see. The students underscore count. Hey, I can know that this is a number that this is a variable that is storing the number of students. So you can see some some people use variables that are mystical, like something like C1 is equals to 42. Now, what is C1? No one knows what C1 is. You have to use descriptive names in terms of creating variables so that it can be descriptive and Anyone can know what you are reading and your code will be readable like an English language, like someone with... So we have said that you must come up with 
descriptive names for your variables okay so you have to come up with descriptive names to name your variable so that it can be readable anyone coming to read your code later will understand what you are writing and also you can see this one is an age shoe price this is well named camo cased well named and you can know whatever you are is here like this is a shoe price a student you can see a student yes these are boolean booleans have a way of using the s keyword is active and say false we also say that booleans the boolean types have you always start with a capital letter so that's a something you have to do we also have an exception maybe coordinates maybe in a for loop maybe in a loops you can use if you maybe have x1 coordinate is equal to so this is an exception so variables must be lowercase no spaces between the variables use underscores to make the code readable you can see this one is very readable now whatever i wrote like that this is not readable so you have to use underscores are used to separate words to make them readable and make what we are writing very good so take note on the variable naming conventions variable name must start with a letter or an underscore a variable name cannot start with a number a variable name can only contain alphanumerical characters and underscores and finally the variable names are case sensitive so so let me bring this one here so i wanted to show you what exactly a variable looks like so a variable is a container uh, so a variable is a container so this is a variable that we put in something inside the variable so we have a variable age so we have age which we put let's say the age is 20 so we put 20 inside the variable and then we name that variable age so every time we want an age Every time we want an age, we come here to the variable and variable, we find a, the variable contains the number 20. Yes. Is a PZ. So every time we come here, we can know this is a variable that contains the word age. Anytime we use the word, the variable, the variable contains something. So this is a variable, another variable, we can store something. So think of a variable like a box can store something inside this variable and then we name that variable so this one can be a school and then here we can put a school's name so anytime we reference the name school we find there what is stored inside that variable okay so that was that is all in variables if you have any question leave in the comment section i'll answer them and also yeah that's it see you next time we'll continue from where we have stopped and look at the other primitive data types so we have looked at booleans floats integers and variables now we'll look in depth into strings and how strings we can do some simple exams examples